And you go you, and you look at the book, and it's unbelievable. And I, I, I will never forget what Serge Klasper said to me when I was looking at the book. He said, "You were lucky." I mean, I know I'm going to use that word very often. I mean, you either either you use the word lucky or it's fate. I mean, you, a lot of people who are very religious will say, "My religious saved me," but but. In, it doesn't matter if you were even religious. If you were not lucky, you will not survive. And that's exactly what Sears Glasper said to me. You were lucky. Because let's, let's just turn the pages. Let's, let's see what five days later, how many people were. And we looked at the five days later. They were, they were like 125 people in the train, and none of them came back. And we were lucky. I, I, I'm, I've talked to hundreds of thousands of, of, of people and a lot of survivors and they, they always say the same thing. You had to be lucky to survive. I mean, the health will help. Religions help tremendously. I'm not denying that because if you, if you had faith in God, that will keep you alive. You say, okay, you know, you're going to help me, God. You know, it's fine. But you had to be lucky to survive what, what, they, what they did to you. Because from the moment on, we were not human beings. We were cattle. That's exactly how they moved. That's, how, that's why they put us in cattle train. We were sheep, we were cattle, we were not human beings. And a lot of people say, how come you didn't escape? How come you didn't rebel? It's a, it's a dumb question to ask, really. If we knew that we're all going to go to the gas chambers, or most of us go to the gas chambers in the ovens, and we're going to wind up as ashes for fertilizer, then of course we would rebel. It doesn't matter if we're going to die, because we're going to die anyway. But if we don't know that, life is precious in a way. Even though you, you may not have the greatest life in the world, it is still very precious. You want to live as much as you can. And so you're just being led by the nose. Maybe someday there'll be a better day. But, but you do that. And I'll give you an example of why we did not know that we were going to the gas chambers. The first day on the train... My mother was really a saint and a wonderful woman, and very wise. She was not educated, but she was a very wise person. She asked me to write a letter to my brother Jacques the first day on a train. And even the, the train stopped once in a while because either there were convoys of, of, of soldiers going someplace and they had to stop and they would go back. And we would hear some French-speaking language the first day. And my mother said, write that letter. And she'd tell me what to write. And the letter, I mean, I'm... It's kind of paraphrasing, because yeah, I don't want to go through the whole letter. I said, I said, uh, dear Jacques, we are 100 people in each compartment. It is so terrible what's happening in them. I don't want to describe it, and I hope that you will never see it for the rest of your life. And I mentioned all the names of the family who was on the train with us. And I said in the letter, I said, we have, we have hope and we have courage, and we hope to join some of the sisters who were deported before us in a resettlement camp in Metz, which is northeast of France. And we hope to come back and be a united family all over again. And that's trivia. I don't think she'd tell me to, to write that. I said, trivia, like, excuse my handwriting, but the train is in motion. And I said, I said, take care of yourself, take care of your family, take care of the sisters who were not deported. And I put a PS in that letter. And I said, tell Amy to go to the laundry and pick up the 10 sheets. Now, why would my mother ask me to write this nonsense if she knew that three days later, she was ashes. How could you do that? We did not know. I rarely cry. I'm very tough. I did a documentary in 1984. It's called Robert Clary A5714, which is my number, Memory of a Liberation from Buchenwald. And I went to Bobigny, where we were put in the camp. And they have, they have cattle cars there. And I went to a cattle car empty. And I stood to talk. The camera is just rolling and I'm talking. And I'm just seeing myself in it. And tears are just... Because I see my mother. I see, I see, I see the, the, the stench. I even felt the stench of the, what's happening there. Because we had two small wooden buckets for toilet facilities for a hundred people. Give us a piece of bread, margarine, sausage, straw on the floor, and not knowing where we were going. What is our destiny, our destination? Where, 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 what, we, what are they going to do with us? And the crying and the moaning and the stench because of the toilet facilities, and you cannot even sit. And I'm in that cattle car, and I'm, I'm, I'm really weeping. 
I'm, I'm just... I, you think, what is, why can't men be that inhuman towards other people? Why do they do that? Why can't they let other people live a life that they want to live? The earth is big enough. 